Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to My Deep Guide. And in today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about Remarkable Paper Pro. While it is the subject of the video and I am kind of directly addressing it, I think that it simply manifests a symptom of a larger point of concern that is related to electrophoretic uh, displays or more specifically e-ink panels. Let's check it out. So a while ago I made a video about the one of the updates, I believe it was 316 when the Remarkable Paper Pro got adaptive contrast update uh, issued. And the thing that I kind of noticed was like, the state of yellowishness was a lot better. Since then it has become painfully obvious to me and overall uh, a lot of users are actually reporting that there are simply inconsistencies between um, yeah the, the the whiteness of the panels between the yeah uh, different remarkable paper pros so this is my own personal remarkable paper pro and this is the lone remarkable paper pro that i got from uh, remarkable to use uh, for testing beta and all that kind of stuff and even when you are, you know, switching them to sleeping and they are running the same exact uh, yeah, version of the OS, um, yeah, there's simply a physical difference. So the white color on my own personal one, very, very yellowish on this one, much, much more unified and much nicer generally overall looking. I've noticed that quite a few people tend to kind of go immediately into the pitchfork and fire type of mode where they say like, oh, it's like Remarkable's fault. But I don't think that the situation is that uh, simple. I think that this is simply a reflection of the state of monopoly and the monopoly is of course by held by e-ink as a company because every single one of these producers, Remarkable, Books, Supernote, um, Kindle, Kobo, like every, every single one of them that's using an e-ink panel, they are getting an e-ink panel from the source, which is the e-ink as a company. And we've seen from numerous examples beforehand on books, for example, devices, they are quite transparent about the pinhole issues or so-called so -called dead pixel issues. They have like a, you know, spec sheet and they tell you like this many holes of this uh, size is warranted for us to actually claim a uh, return of the panel as not up to spec. I don't know how it works after that point, but that's basically what the requirement of e-ink is towards books and in relation, of course, towards the user from books. To my knowledge, none of these producers, I don't think that they have any control over what's an acceptable panel and what's not. It seems to me that it's simply because e-ink can do that because there's no competitors. So to rein it back in, what I think is happening here is that similar to the pinhole issues that books and big me devices have, similar to, yeah, recent Kindle devices having issues with consistency with the front light or just overall the uniformity of the screen because uh, there were quite a few users reporting it for the Colorsoft and also for the Scribe 2 that there were some inconsistencies between different units. There's one common element there and that's e-ink. And I think that what we're seeing here with the Remarkable Paper Pro is the same thing. E-ink delivering uh, gallery panels that are simply different. If that's the case, then <laughs> they're having a lot of work to do. Because just imagine, I mean, yeah, the books device has a pinhole, but if you get like a different panel that has to be recalibrated in a different way and like different maximums and minimums, that that's a whole other pickle to, to be in. Because I think that it's a difficult situation to be in for both for the yeah, manufacturers and for the users because as a user you pay good money and then you expect to get this device but when you get this device what happens then so i reached out to remarkable uh directly with that type of question to kind of see what do they have to say and what is their response to this hoping to see like 
yeah, maybe we get a little bit more clarification on what's going on and also to share this to the users so that they know what to expect and what to do. And here's the official statement from Remarkable regarding this uh, matter. Thank you for reaching out and for sharing your observations on panel variants across devices, including Remarkable products. As you know, our display technology utilizes real physical color pigments, which naturally introduce some variation, similar to what you might see with traditional printing or paint. This is an inherent aspect of reflective display technology. If, however, a device falls outside the expected range of variation and impacts the customer experience, we encourage users to reach out to our customer care team for assistance. Expected range of variation. That's something that I'm gonna come back to a little bit later. At Remarkable, product quality and customer experience are top priorities, and we're continuously working to refine and improve our products through uh, ongoing R&D. While we are unable to comment on specifics due to contractual obligations, important to note there, we remain committed to ensuring a great user experience. We appreciate your efforts to provide accurate and balanced context, as this helps foster a more in-depth understanding of the technology. Thank you for your engagement and for the contributing uh, to meaningful discussions in the community. And while that response does make sense for majority of things, I think it does make sense. I still had a couple of follow-ups back and forth, but unfortunately no real clarification about one point of concern which I have, which is uh, when they say, if however a device falls outside the expected range of variation, and impacts the customer experience. But the key word here is the uh, expected range of variation. So what I try to kind of get is a more concrete threshold, like minimum, maximum, or what does what is the expected um, yeah, range of variation. Unfortunately, there was no clarification at all. Basically, it just comes down to uh, yeah, if if the experience is such that the customer is not satisfied, then they have the yeah uh, to 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 reach out to customer care team for assistance. Which for me personally, I think that that is simply too vague for something uh, like this because like where's where's the minimums, where's the maximums. And However, there was a key piece of a hinting there as well, while we are unable to comment on specifics due to contractual obligations. So that in itself is also very, very clear as a statement. Uh, so I, I can't really fault Remarkable in this response, while yes, I wish that the clarity of it was a little bit more well-defined, it is also clearly stated that that's something that they cannot do due to extraneous external circumstances that they are themselves in and that they're trying to kind of do the best that they can in there. All right, so that's my take on this complicated matter at hand. I think that it's much, much more multi-layered and more complex than just like, oh, you are bad, oh, you are bad, oh, you are bad. It's like, it's far more nuanced than that. And I think that it's helpful for uh, us as a community to maybe try and keep that in mind when we are dealing with a situation that we are actually dealing in, that is a complete monopoly on yeah the display panels that these devices are using and relying on and that is e-ink yeah has those panels and that's that there virtually are no genuine competitors that can be considered and that can be a problem and here i firmly believe that we are witnessing some of the elements of that problem when you have a single company Basically, yeah, holding a monopoly on a vital piece of technology that so many of the devices are relying on. I simply felt that it was important to at least clarify these things because I keep hearing like, oh, it's, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, when it's actually 
a little bit more nuanced than that and a little bit more complicated than that. So my hope for this video was twofold. First one is to address the, um, the very real issue that there's there are consistencies between the panels on the Remarkable Paper Pro devices and what the official response of the Remarkable regarding that issue is so that if you are experiencing that issue that you know that you can contact the Remarkable support and that they are trying to be as helpful as they can or at least that's how it sounds. And the second point was to kind of maybe smidge shine a little bit of a light on the deeper issue at hand that it's not just books, it's not just Remarkable, it's not just Kindle, it's something else. There's something else that's common between them and the thing that's common between them is e-ink. And I think that it's an important thing to at least be aware of. That's, that's the extent of it that I was hoping for this video. Hopefully I managed for some of you and if I did, then I'm happy. I hope that you liked the video and that you found it informative and or useful. If you did, please like, subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below. And um, do let me know in the comments down below what are your opinions regarding this whole issue at hand. And do you have any kind of constructive suggestions on how these things could be approached or should be approached if, uh, you know, the manufacturer's arms and legs and toes are all tied in contracts and obligations and NDAs and all that kind of stuff. There's only a limited set of things that these companies can do as well. So what are the things that could be done in a situation like this, if any? Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.